I'm Marty Nemco. Those of you that follow my work know I like to do experiments. Well, this is an experiment. Its main purpose is to explain to you how I accomplish so much. I've written about 10 books just since uh, the end of 2022. Um, and um, I've written a total of 32. But I want to um, share with you uh, a little bit about how I do it, but also, I'm being really honest, I'm very proud of my books, I guess every author is, and I want to give you about 30 seconds from an author's perspective on why this book is worth your time. First, I do want to say, I, I, I think that authors don't sufficiently respect readers' time. There's so much you could read, and we're all busier. So I've become enamored of short form. I've written plenty of uh, non-fiction how-to on loneliness, stress management, time management, how to land a job, how to be self-employed, how to public speak, all, all that stuff. <clears throat> how to meet people, how to be better liked, all that. But I've also become enamored, enamored of the short form in fiction. There's a term called flash fiction, which are like, you know, two to three minute long little stories that have to, in order to succeed, <clears throat> have to not just have plot, not just have character, not just have conflict, but something to think about, all in two to three minutes. I've become enamored of that, I believe, underappreciated form, and I've written over a thousand of these pieces of flash fiction, and I've assembled them into a bunch of books, and I thought I would introduce you to some of them. I'm pretty proud of them. <clears throat> First is called Secrets. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> do do these things in one take as again here's an example of how I try to make the most of my time anybody who wants videos that are very polished and have all these production values and great editing and backgrounds you, there's plenty out there but for me you've either got to like me for my content and perhaps authenticity and delivery uh, and if that's what you want that's hopefully this is uh, worth subscribing to etc so <clears throat> and the price is certainly right, zero. Anyway, this first book is called Secrets. It is about a hundred of these short, short stories. Um, and these secrets are a diary of an average man from 10th birthday to 90th, other diary entries like, I'm insecure, or I like to read children's books, or I'm thorough, okay, some say compulsive, I have low sex drive, I'm nice, but I'm not good, the silenced majority. <clears throat> then I have I, if, in, a con, in confession, a slug goes to confession, Donald Trump goes to confession, Joe Biden goes to confession, a pothead goes to confession, etc. <clears throat> then a section called Behind Closed Doors, uh, a fight about time, a fight about money, what you don't see, a fight about family, a fight about sex, and a bunch of others. Anyway, so that's secrets. Um, <clears throat> and I really, people don't realize that authors never expect to make money, but you do care to be read. So I've priced these things crazy low. So I think this is, each one of my books are like between four and six dollars in paperback and at one or two dollars in, in Kindle. Clearly it's not for the money. I only get a portion of that anyway. It's, I do care to have you read my stuff because as I get older, I'll be 74 years old in June, <clears throat> it, I do care to leave a legacy. I do care about impact, even in my fiction work. So that's the first one. <clears throat> then there's affirmative actions. It's um, where people take bold action, for better or worse. Again, 100 stories, roughly speaking. And they divide them into lighter stories and darker stories. Um, <clears throat> some are romantic, some are subversive, some are conservative, some are apolitical. Not a lot of them are super liberal or radical, I must admit. Anyway, but I love it. One of my very favorites, um, this is Affirmative Actions. This is what people like, seem to like the best. <clears throat> little doggy stories. This is my dog, Hachi, on the cover. And it's about 75 little stories, positive, you know, not sappy. I've avoided being sappy. But little stories about uh, positive or negative related to dogs, hopefully with lessons to be learned from each. <clears throat> these are all, by the way, again, I've, been, I've written these since the uh, fall of uh, 2022, most of them in 2023 and 2024. A dose of reality. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Some of these are essays, others are short, short stories. We live in an echo chamber here in the Bay Area where there's only one 
correct, quote-unquote, <clears throat> way to think, which is leftist. Uh, if I write more leftist, I have some liberal views. I'm basically a moderate Democrat in balance. <clears throat> but I have some conservative views, and I have some libertarian views. Um, and if I just write more liberal stuff, I'm just a grain of sand on a very large leftist beach, where this tends to be <clears throat> moderate to conservative thinking that I think nonetheless is worthy of time. I read one of my favorite books, A Dose of Reality. I decided to take on a challenge of having an illustrated book for people just starting out. And I'm afraid it ended up looking too cartoonish. You see, the cover looks like it's for really super young people. But it's really meant for college students, college graduates, college dropouts. <clears throat> Jeremy's Quest, I tell a story of this guy Jeremy and all the crap he goes through. And it starts with him cheating on an exam. I wanted it to feel realistic. The studies show that about 70% of college students cheat on exams. <clears throat> and so I start with that as a way of establishing, in fact, this is not just going to be a bunch of standard how-to stuff, but it talks about his travails in bed, <clears throat> in career, with his parents, with money, all that stuff, and it's thin, and it's illustrated by this fantastic guy named Siddhartha Malik in India. He uh, <clears throat> created exact custom uh, watercolors for everything that, I, everything that I wanted. He was amazing. And again, because these are color illustrated, it's a little more expensive. I think this is eight bucks. But still, I think it's uh, you know, maybe two bucks in, uh, for, on the Kindle version. <clears throat> in the how-to genre, Probably my most my best recent book is How to Do Life. Career stuff, relationship stuff, meaning of life stuff, everything. Um, very practical, but hopefully not obvious stuff. And um, um, this is probably my most helpful book since my, I had written a bunch of dummies books, Careers for Dummies, Cool Careers for Dummies, which I think are very useful, but those were written uh, in, the 2000, in the teens, 2012 to 2018. This was just written, uh, and, so, and it's thinner. So, it, you know, again, <clears throat> these are all short, short essays, two or three minutes, designed to help us free aspect of your life. Work stories. Forgive the cover thing I had put a label on it for some reason I won't bore you with. You know, I've had 6,000 career counseling clients. These hundred stories are born of the real-world experiences of my clients, my friends, and myself. Of course, I've hidden uh, the names, and I've added some fictional elements. They are fiction to make it more interesting, but they certainly are born of my experience with all my clients. This is work stories. Starting out stories. These are also story, fictional stories about people <clears throat> early in life, from preteen all the way through probably around age 25 or 30. Again, 100 short, short stories. Light and dark. I, I think there's enough puffery talk, how to what I call Oprah talk. You can do it, just work hard, you can do it. Believe, believe, you know, visualizations. That, these are more realistic. They're not all negative at all, but they're definitely realistic. <clears throat> Speaking of realistic, I wrote a pair called Light and Dark. These are these short, short stories. Um, I find it more fun to write about the dark. You see, it's thicker. Um, just because I, I think there's too much written that's happy talk in America. Europeans laugh at us for that. So I, uh, so I do have this compare of companions. These are all, again, these two to three minute short stories, uh, light and dark. <clears throat> then I wrote one about relationships, because although I'm a career counselor, it so often bleeds into relationship issues. And so I've had a ton of clients and confidentiality in my office or on Zoom or on phone, tell me all kinds of relationship stuff. And so, and although these are fiction, they are again born heavily out of my clients, my friends, and my own experience. And finally, I've now reached the age where not to, I have, can lay some claim to be able to write senior stories, lighter and darker. Again, these are stories mainly about older people, the bright side, the dark side, but more than anything, realistic. But each essay, each story is two to three minutes. And I think what I, that's what I should end. I should just read you one of these things for the hell of it. So I'm going to read you Sam's last concert. And it's going to involve a little piano playing too. So I'll we'll see if it'll, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, but we'll try. Anyway, <clears throat> Sam's last concert. In the wings, Sam could hear the concert master tuning up the orchestra. Damn, my hand is shaking more than usual. <laughs> it's a bad Parkinson's day. 
Plus, it's my last concert. I am I'm nervous. I, I, I'm glad I decided on the Grieg, but with these hands, nothing is easy. Sam had been a concert pianist his whole life. At age 11, he finished fourth in the Midwest Regional Young Artists Competition, and now at age 83, had performed 45 concerts, including one with the Kansas City Symphony. <clears throat> he thought, true, that was just in the KC Symphony Summer Festival when lots of the A players were on vacation, but still. <laughs> Somehow I wish my ex-wife were here. How could she have dumped me? I still wish she were here tonight. Hmm. Do I play it safe with my playing? If I make a lot of note mistakes, it's going to make the audience think I stayed at it too long, like those star baseball players who would rather hit 200 than retire. Or do I go for a home run? A chance at a write-up in the Kansas City Star. Roseman finishes with a flourish. The conductor forced Sam a forced smile and strode on stage. This is it. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Damn, my hands are shaking more. I'm taking too long. i got to get out there. Stand up straight. Old men hunch. Stride. Don't shuffle. But Sam could manage only to shuffle on stage. He hung on to the piano with one hand, and he bowed his head to the audience. If I tried to bow from the waist, I could fall. And he sat down at the piano. I've had this moment so many times, but this is different. Sam used his old trick of adjusting the seat up and down, not because it needed adjusting, but to buy a little more time to ground himself before the moment of truth. And Sam began with the Grieg Piano Concerto. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it, but we're going to try. I have a little keyboard up here. Oh, this is the way life This is what happens. When you try to do things authentically with one take, or you're too time conscious to do repeat takes. Anyway, for what it's worth, here's a few notes of the Greek. but I hope you will have at least heard it softly we'll find out okay back to this anyway so those are my books I as I said one of the certainly one of the purposes of this is to try to talk about time effectiveness I am aware and you're now aware that there are mistakes there are errors there are coughings there are hesitations there are microphone falls down I am well aware that I could take the time to polish it. To get it right would probably require five times as much time. Like many of us, we're all busy. I have client coming in 15 minutes. I make a decision that it's the wisest use of my time in terms of making the biggest difference, which I swear is what I really care about. To make it in one take, errors or not, and hopefully you'll derive more benefit, if, if you will, from the authenticity of that than if I, like millions of others, do polish things. If I'm wrong, please do not subscribe to my channel. Please go elsewhere. But if you like this, I certainly do welcome your uh, thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like it if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. Or this is available as a podcast it's called How to Do Life, available on Spotify, Amazon, all the rest of it. I would certainly take a look at any of the books I've mentioned. Um, but in any event, I, I do thank you for watching. I like to end all of these. This will be a podcast as well as a YouTube video. I like to end this with my favorite quote, 
which I think is probably more relevant today than ever in my lifetime. We are so hell-bent on believing our views. We are either hard leftists or hard rightists. Moderation is almost seen as wishy-washy, tepid. But I think there is wisdom that resides across the ideological spectrum. So I like to, especially for those who are hard believers, true believers, fervid in their beliefs, we find comfort among those who agree with us, growth among those who don't.